My name is Michael Lavacallier. My role here at USD is Assistant Vice President for Mission and Ministry. And I've been working at USD for 11 years. So that's how I came to be a practitioner. In a sense, it's part of my job to be in the chapel every Sunday night when we have Mass, and Wednesday nights when we have Mass for Peace, and at other special moments. However, even though it's part of my job, it's also a place where I do experience God, where I worship personally. So it's not just that I'm there for my job, but it's also a place where I do go to practice my own faith. Crucifix to be a symbol of love. It's a sign of God's love for humankind. There's a famous Bible passage that, in fact, used to, it used to get held up at sporting events a lot, at football games, at big events, and it's John 3.16. That's all it says a lot of times in the crowd. And what the passage says is, God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that we might have life. So that's what the cross is, a symbol of how much God loved us, how much God wanted to be in community, in communion with human beings and was willing to actually uh, become human in order to make that possible. One interesting thing about the crucifix is that the word crucifix implies the body of Jesus is on the cross. And in some other traditions, I actually grew up Protestant, not Catholic. Later I became Catholic. In the Protestant tradition, usually the cross is depicted without the body of Jesus on it. In Catholic world, the crucifix implies the body's on there. Sometimes it's called the corpus. Some people experience that as a little bit jarring or even um, grotesque because sometimes the body is clearly visibly abused to be a reminder of how much Jesus suffered while he was on earth. For example, sometimes there's crosses where you can see blood on the body of Jesus. So that's an interesting difference. Uh, nevertheless, it's, it's intended to be a symbol of love, and that's, that's how I understand it. Right, yeah, as I was getting at as a symbol of love, it's a symbol of God's love for humankind. So I do see the, the cross, the crucifix, as an ultimate symbol of relationship between God and humankind in a meeting place where God entered into relationship with human beings. However, I also see it as a, as a reminder of the relationships in my life. In fact, there's a, a cross that I keep here in my office. Uh, this is it. This cross was hanging on the wall of my grandmother's house uh, as I was growing up. You can see it, it doesn't have the body on it because my grandmother wasn't Catholic, but it has these praying hands. And I love this cross because my grandmother taught me how to pray. She's the one, more than anybody else, that sort of passed on the Christian faith to me. This cross hung in her uh, dining room throughout my life, as long as I can remember. And then when she passed away, it was in her hands in the, in the casket. And then before she was buried, my mom got it and gave it to me. So it's very special to me. I keep it here on my wall. And it's a reminder not only of love, of God's love, but also of my grandmother's love and the way in which faith was passed on from her to me. So I think for many people, crosses, religious artifacts in general, but crucifixes can be uh, symbols of relationships. Many people wear crucifixes around their neck or a cross, and a lot of times those are given as a gift. Um, so I do think they, they remind us not only of God, our relationship with God, but also relationship with other people. It's a good question. The word used, though, is a little bit, I don't know, it doesn't quite resonate with my relationship with the crucifix. Maybe more relate to would, be, would speak to that. And so um, the way the crucifix shows up in my life, is, for example, in my house with my, my wife and my daughter, we have a, cruce, uh, a crucifix in every room, especially in our bedrooms. So it's that constant reminder of our relationship with God, uh, the way in which we are in that relationship of love. And I think a reminder of the love that, that we share among us. I think uh, there's crucifixes here in my office, a lot of them, as a reminder of people like my grandmother and uh, other crucifixes that I've picked up while traveling. So they're a reminder of sort of places I've been, experiences that have shaped me. And then of course in Founders Chapel, of course, there's a very prominent crucifix that's the center of our worship as, as Catholics when we come together for Mass. The one other way in which the cross, more than the crucifix, I guess, is part of my practice is like most Catholics, I cross myself in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, before praying, after praying, do this with my family before we eat dinner at night, certainly in Mass. So the cross is sort of a very present, omnipresent symbol in my life that I relate to often. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Because while I understand the cross and the crucifix to be a symbol of love, others don't, and I'm well aware of that. I think it's even the, the KKK 
has used the cross, uh, a burning cross, to intimidate people, especially people of color, um, as a way of, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing with the cross, but I know that some people experience the cross not so much as a symbol of love, but as a symbol of exclusion or judgment or condemnation or something like that. And that's troubling, of course. Although I think at the same time, any powerful symbol has more than one meaning, and the cross is a powerful symbol. So I think, for example, the American flag. Does the American flag mean uh, or signify liberty and freedom and justice? Yes. And does it signify other things like colonialism and oppression for, for, for example, Native American folks? The answer is yes to all that. You know? So I think in a way the crucifix is similar to an American flag where it can have many meanings. And it depends on the context, it depends on the relationship, and it depends on the person's uh, social and personal position. Definitely. And one of the, my favorite things about crosses is the way in which they come in different shapes and sizes. And so this is a, a cross or a crucifix from El Salvador. And you can see here it's different from a traditional one made by poor people, many of whom who have suffered injustice, who are sort of the excluded, the marginalized, people who in our current political context are often demonized as the other. Um, so those kind of folks have made this cross and it's interesting to see what's on it, what's not on it. It's a symbol of, of uh, a dove, of peace. I don't have the other crucifix, which I wish I did to show you. It's hanging in my daughter's room, but it's a similar cross made from El Salvador and on it, instead of Jesus, is the image of a woman, of a campesino, a simple woman. So what's interesting about this is that there's a way of interpreting the cross or the crucifix as a symbol of what happened to one person, Jesus, 2,000 years ago that doesn't necessarily have relevance for the rest of our world today. But there's another way of thinking about and understanding the crucifix is that there are still people who are crucified today. And those people tend to be people of color, people who are marginalized, people who don't have power and privilege. And so the, the, the crucifix doesn't just have to remind us of something that happened once long ago to one particular person. It can call our attention to the way in which injustices and structural sin is continuing to inflict crucifixion on people today. I'm Gino Correa. I come from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, I've done most of my ministry there among Hispanic and among Native Americans and uh, every other person who lives there. And uh, I've also worked in uh, uh, foreign missions. And uh, I was in San Diego for a meeting of uh, Franciscans, which I am. I'm a Franciscan priest. That's why I wear this. I'm not a mascot for the San Diego Padres. Uh, this is part of uh, who we are as uh, Franciscans, followers of St. Francis. And uh, they asked me if I would be interested in doing university ministry. And so I looked into it, and so here I am, beginning my fifth year here at uh, USD with university ministry. I live on campus. I'm a university minister. I live at the San Buen Apartments, and uh, I'm a counselor and help with retreats and just talking people one to one. Okay. Well, I think that the crucifix is identified, you know, by a lot of people uh, as as the symbol of, of Catholicism. You know, uh, if if you're a Catholic, then you've encountered the crucifix. You've you've seen it either in your home. Or if you've went, gone to uh, Catholic school, you've seen it on the wall, and uh, it, it's the the icon that uh, represents for us in a in a physical form the, the the faith that we have that Jesus Christ died, suffered, and died on the cross uh, for us, out of love for us, and to save us from our sins, and uh, that this is the sign of our our redemption. It is the sign of uh, his death over uh, the evil that, that holds us in death. Okay. Well, I think that, you know, in any relationship, the, uh, the end of a relationship, whether it's uh, through death or it's through 
uh, a separation because of a, a change in, in career or uh, children moving out of their homes and growing up. Uh, all of that represents a, a death of sorts, you know, the separation of relationships. And what the crucifix certainly has symbolized for me and, and, and for many people is that love doesn't let go. Even as something as intense as the crucifixion where, where, where Jesus dies and all seems lost, uh, it, it, it holds up to us the, 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 the fact, the faith that we have that there is never an end to love. Love doesn't let go. And even though we suffer separation, even though we suffer death, even though we, we suffer the end of things, including the end of life, there is no real end in, in that love that holds it all together and, and keeps it always alive in uh, who we are as people of the kingdom. For me, it, it just symbolizes the, the very important and most difficult aspect of growth and transformation. And I, I just put it simply as the movement from being ego-centered to other-centered. And, it, you know, as, as vast and as beautiful and as big and as deep and as high as the universe is, most of us spend most of our lives in that very confined space we call the ego. That's where we, you know, are the most secure. That's where we know our, our walls. We, we, we are in control and we want to be in control. And so uh, when there are those moments when I realize that I'm not in control, when I'm in those moments when I realize that I'm called not just to keep myself safe, but to let go of myself in order to be there for someone else, uh, the crucifix is always the the symbol that gives me that strength of, that's what I'm called to do. I'm called to believe that much. I'm, I'm called to, instead of do this, do this, you know, and, 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 and uh, let go, let God, and, and let that trust bring me to that transformation that I think down deep in the heart of our hearts, we all seek, you know, to grow bigger than where we are right now. Well, I think that even as a, as a child, when I found myself in a, in a time of crisis, uh, you know, either with family issues, with my parents, uh, I, I found myself just naturally and automatically going to the crucifix to someone who understood what suffering is, you know? Someone who, who, who experienced, I believe, uh, anything and much more than what I'm experiencing in terms of loss, in terms of suffering, in terms of trauma. Um, I have found that that this is somebody, this is something I can hold on to, and in holding on to it, I discover he's holding on to me. No, uh, yeah, my parents very much so. My parents were, were both deaf mutes, you know, and so my first language, the language of the heart is sign language. And so my mother taught me uh, the sign for Jesus is this. And basically it's the sign of the wounds. Uh, so Jesus is the wounded one. And Jesus is the wounded one who touches, and this is the sign for touch, who touches where we hurt, you know. And so just the, the, the whole thing of, of the signs for God, the signs where Jesus really uh, pointed to the crucifix. Our God is the God that we recognize because he's the God who actually shows himself as the wounded one. I think that's one of the real, uh, you know, sins of, of religion is that we, we tend to Kind of, you know, we say that, that God created us in His image, and we try to return the favor by making and re, uh, forming God into our image, you know. And so for so many people, you know, uh, Jesus was a card-carrying Democrat or 
Republican, or he was an American, he was white, he was, uh, you know, whatever we look like, we want to make our God look like, you know, and, uh, and so it, it becomes kind of a self-serving uh, kind of, of religion that justifies us then remaining within the confines of our ego, the confines of our definition, and not allowing the God who's so much bigger than all of that to pull us out of that and to recognize the many faces of God in the world and in all of creation. And one of the big differences between perhaps Catholics and, and other uh, religions who also have the cross as a, an important symbol in their, in their faith is that the crucifix has the body of Christ on it. And, and sometimes the depiction of that suffering can be quite graphic and maybe even gruesome. And I think one of the things that that has helped us to do is to recognize that crucifixion continues to happen all the time. And the crucifixion for Jesus was a crucifixion of, uh, that was unjust, it was a crucifixion done by those who were in fear, those who wanted to maintain control and power, and that continues to happen in our, in our world today. And so the crucifix reminds us that, that we are called to look upon the cross, the cross not just hanging on the wall, but the cross that people are carrying right now out in, the, in our world, in the streets, people who are getting crucified because of who they are because of where they come from, because of economic uh, uh, injustice. So it, it really is the great symbol for peace and justice, you know, that we never close our eyes to the suffering that still exists in our world. Yeah, so uh, I'm a junior here at UIC. I'm involved with the ministry for this will be my third year involved in ministry. Like I got more involved this year working with the chapel as a student sacristan. Um, but I got really involved my first year here. Um, that's actually where I found home when I came to the Mass for the first time. That's how I found my community here at UIC. And since then I joined the chapel choir. I've been part of the liturgical ministry team. So I've been just really kind of getting involved with the chapel community that way. So to me, how I've learned it, at least with the crucifix, is like the symbol of God's love. So like God gave his only son, um, Jesus, and he died for our sins. And to me, like that's always been like the symbol of that love that we really experience from God. Um, even though he's a very like kind of absent figure, if you will, like we don't get to see him or really like get a direct answer from him, like in talking to him. Um, it's that love that you just feel like being in community or kind of being around the people. And I think the cross or the crucifix is a really great way of kind of showing that love, I would say. I would say, I think for me, when it comes to the cross, it just reminds me of um, home. So whenever I'm in a different place or a place that I don't know, um, it's helpful to walk into maybe a comfortable space or a space that I know and to see a cross or to see something that like is familiar to me really makes me feel better, um, really makes me feel at home. Um, and then the values I would say I pick up from there would be just like that feeling of community, feeling loved, um, knowing that you can put in so much for someone and being able to work with that person and just kind of be there for someone, um, almost kind of like self-sacrifice almost, just like really kind of showing that there is a lot you can do for someone and kind of giving you the ability to kind of do those things too. Yeah, so I wear one obviously. Um, it's a, a representation of just a retreat that I went on, so it's kind of in my daily life through that. Um, I would also say um, one of the big things that I do is I actually make the sign of the cross when I walk past founders or the Immaculata. Um, and for me, what that really just symbolizes is just um, prayer and just like praying. It reminds me that like God's always around and with me, like no matter like if I may forget to acknowledge like him, um, it just reminds me that he's always there really. I 
I guess the first time I started using the crucifix was probably during my baptism. I'm probably too young to remember. Um, but I probably used it first then, and then I truly started using it really, I would say, um, when I got to college and when I kind of started, I got my own. Um, I have one in my room. So I guess realistically I have like maybe one or two that are like continually with me. Um, but I would say I really started using it when I started going to college, going to mass more, um, praying at home has always been a big thing for us. So we always pray in front of a crucifix. Um, so I really say I probably started to use it a lot more when I got older and started to like really understand like the significance and why we have it in our life too. So I would say mostly a mix of my parents and like catechism classes. It's kind of a little bit of both. So I guess since like the foundation of Christianity comes from like the cross and comes from all those things. So I guess like the basic foundational origin is really like, you know, Jesus dying on a cross. And that's like typically been like the origin story, I guess, for the cross. For me, at least has been always been connected to my faith. It hasn't really been connected to anything else. Um, so when I think about the cross, the first thing I think of typically is faith and like church and kind of just religion, I would say. I really haven't. I know in terms of like how the crucifix is really associated with just the church in general. I know there's lots of conflict with the church, so that tends to kind of maybe drag that into it a little bit. But in terms of like the cross itself, like I personally haven't seen anything or heard anything that revolves around that much tension. Um, and I personally have not had to experience it either. So I'm not sure if I can answer that. Yeah. Yeah, so I took a really interesting class last semester. Um, it's called Racial Injustice, the Catholic Perspective. And one of the things that we talked about was how um, a lot of the icons in the church are depicted as white, even though um, typically, or the actual story is that Jesus is Middle Eastern, or tan, actually, if you will. So he's not the traditional like white color that most places depict him as. So a big point of conflict that we kind of talked about in our class was, how do we differentiate like, you know, a Eurocentric version of Jesus and kind of the holy like historical figures when in reality they're all definitely like a different color, like they're all like, they're not being represented accurately. And for me, like now, like when I walk into even like my church back home, which I go to an Indian church, like all the icons are white. And like, it confuses me because it's like, we're all brown, <laughs> but the cross and everyone else is white. So it's like that disparity almost of like, they don't even represent like, who we are as a person so like how and it's not denying the validity of the cross at that point it's just saying that like it's an interesting thing to think about like how do you feel like when someone that you're supposed to be praying to and obviously that we've been taught like the cross and Jesus are all universal but at that point it's almost like when you're taught that like he comes from a specific place and then everything around you doesn't represent that place and it feels really weird so at least for me, like that's always been a controversy that I've just had, which is like the cross being kind of that representation of it, or the crucifix, I would say. Um, but yeah, that's probably one of the biggest things. <laughs>